For your grace is sufficient to keep us. For your strength is made perfect when we're weak. When the road is long and heavy, when it's dark and dark, and see clearly. I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence my help comes. My help comes from you. Lead me, oh, lead me, oh, lead me to where I've never been before, a place I've never seen. When I come to the end of myself, Father, carry me. Father, carry me. When I come to the end of myself, Father, carry me.
that when I can see the place of the most high Shall I light under the shadow of the Almighty I'll see of the Lord in my everything you my for My God Cover us with your face, and under your wings you will hide. Your truth shall be your shield. Cover us, cover us like a bridge. Take us over, carry me over, carry me over, lead me over, lead me, carry me over.
was so empty I needed someone Who could take away the emptiness inside I'll turn away when friends would tell me I should come to you and surrender all my life My life was reckless Till I obeyed them And find a church that I could go to set me free It was at the altar I cried, Lord, save me I felt the burden slowly lifting off my life <laughs> My life was lost without you Every time I think I'm better, I get worse Oh, dear Jesus, I need your help, Lord Don't you ever turn away and let me fall
and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. I know that my Redeemer lived it, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worm destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and man I shall behold, and not an other. For none of us has life in himself. And none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we're alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for the rest from their labors. We're gathered here on this special day to celebrate and thank God for the life of Bishop Vincent Jocelyn Hope. A long-standing justice of the peace who was born in November 18, 1946 on an August 1, 2023. The transition was made. May his soul find rest with the Lord. May light continue to shine on his path. And we look forward By and by. The hymn, this is just what heaven means to me. The choir started it out, we'll continue, after which Reverend D. Lewis Watson will take us to the throne. A country where no twilight shadows deepen, on ending day where night shall never be. A city where no star shall ever gather. This is just what heaven What we.
my shepherd I not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green he leadeth me. The quiet waters fly. Yet though I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fare no ill. For thou art with me and thy rod and staff in comfort still. Hallelujah!
bless the Lord, a very busy, busy man, but he took the time to be with us today. And so we want to welcome the Custos of Westmoreland, the Reverend, the very Reverend Hartley Perry. Coming out of the United States, our general overseer stopped everything he had to do to be here today. And we are so happy to have with us our general overseer, the Reverend Tim Marty. Put your hands together as we welcome him. Bless the Lord. Beside him, we have the Assistant General Overseer and Missions Director, the Reverend Jay Wallet. Put your hands together. Bless the Lord. One of the persons who worked relentlessly with our Bishop Cole was Reverend Ken Massigal and Sister Linda. And we are very happy to have them with us today. Put your hands together for them. We have Reverend Hoover and the Reverend Rick Braden. We are very happy to have them with us today. Uh, all our ministers, we have uh, Bishop Marlon Leslie. He had to be here. We are very happy to have him. Bless the name of the Lord. And so we are so happy for all the persons that are present. I do not want to start to call names and get into trouble, but we are so happy to have all our ministers, most of them sitting over here. Clap yourself. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And we are indeed happy for them. All of you coming from near and far to celebrate this good man. We thank you for being here. We are happy for the family. Sister Cole, many of you don't know her. She sits right in the front. Sister Cole, you want to stand, let everybody see you. Look at this beautiful lady. That's Bishop's wife. Bless the Lord. We're very happy, very happy. And there are other members of the family that are sitting here. Brothers, sisters, and others from the family. And we just want to thank God for them. Amen. I'll be running the program along with Reverend Carol Campbell and we'll be going together through our program today. But let me set the ground rules. If we allow everybody to say what they have to say, we will not leave here. If we allow everybody to talk what is on their heart, they will, we will not leave here. And so, except for the customers that will give five minutes, everybody else is three minutes. Bless the Lord. And I'm not afraid to come and take the mic from you. Bishop Paul will draw you. Come on. Bishop Paul will stand up beside you. Bishop Paul will say, I'm going to charge you. I'm a JP. You understand me? That was the kind of man he was. And if we have the discipline that he exudes, all of us will get out of here on time. Bless the Lord. And so the program is before you. There's going to be one adjustment and in the evangelist daily to the program. But as the program is, the program is set. And we are going to follow the program as it is. Amen? Amen. So we want to get out of here on time. Let me invite Dorita Simmons, daughter of our beloved Bishop Cole, to read the first lesson. The scripture lesson is taken from Psalms 121, reading from the first verse to the end. I begin. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shame upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The word of the Lord. In the great triumphant morning when we hear that cry, boom, cry, and the day in Christ shall rise, we'll be changed. 
the Lord. Our third scripture lesson comes to us from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 58. Krishna Hannigan, but daughter of our beloved Bishop Paul.
Salvation. Coming to pay tribute is the Reverend Canon, the Honorable Hartley D. Perry, C.D. J.P. Costas Rotolorium of Westmoreland. And I understand he carries a new uh, title of Lieutenant. Make welcome our friend and brother, Reverend Perry. Thank you very much, Bishop Joseph Campbell, pastor of this church and other pastors or visitors from the United States of America, fellow Christians, mourners, Mother Nate, Brother Cole, Vincent, Brother G. Good morning, everyone. I know it's kind of warm in here, but you are not concerned about that. Because you've come to pay your tribute to Bishop Cole. Yeah. Thanks again for Bishop Cole. It is, we have to agree, a sad day, not just for the members of this church family and the Tidia family, but for the entire community of Peter's and his environment. Bishop Vincent Cole has made an indelible contribution to the social, spiritual, and financial landscape of our community. I have watched with tremendous admiration the phenomenal achievements of this notable justice of the peace for this part. His willingness to sign documents such as passports, driver's license, his willingness to write letters of recommendations for persons who want to get jobs, to ensure that persons are facilitated at the banks when they go to open an account. All of these things and more to seal and sign documents that make it possible for many of us to survive in our communities. We will miss tremendously the contribution of our brother Vincent Cole. I personally have lasting memory of the days when he worked at the Petersfield Health Center. Sure, I remember him as a pharmacist, but more so at the Petersfield Health Center. My mother was a nurse on staff, and all the ones of you would remember my mother. She would always depend on the support and respect of Pastor G, who, like me, called my mother, mommy. So whenever Pastor G was referring to my mother, he would say mommy. So you see, what does that say? He and I were brothers. <laughs> this beautiful edifice in which we worship today, what am I talking about? We're talking about this building here. We're talking about this lovely structure here. It reflects the commitment, dedication, and influence of this great servant of God. You know, when we look into the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament that we see, this wise man they call Solomon. And the reason why they regarded Solomon as being wise was primarily because he built the temple. It was because he built the temple at Jerusalem that they regarded him as being wise. 
What then would we say of Bishop Cole? He was. He had not just a passion, but a vision of what he wanted the church to become. He never wanted a pure, pure building or a pure, pure church. He wanted the best. Because that signifies the quality and the caliber of the man. Remember seeing him from time to time at the supermarket, buying his grocery. He, like myself, would shop elsewhere because we drive cars. But we want to build our own local community establishments. We're not going to take up money to sell the barn elsewhere. We want to spend our money right here. And we want to spend it, well, I better tread carefully. But I, I, I don't care, I don't care. I don't make the money again. Plain and simple. We see too many of them take out the money to give the child. And leave the nigga man business to fall. Little more, what is going to happen is that you're going to mark your mark made in China. <laughs> so you don't care that you get it a little cheaper, maybe the Chinaman. But if you ever see how the Chinaman behave, or he keep himself in each place, or how he speak on the floor, same way. Then you have second thought. It's not been said. A pastor told me to tell me say we need them to say. And we've heard some of them already. We attest to the spiritual impact that he has had on their lives, transforming them into persons worthy to be called children of God. We're heading across from here, and Pastor G having his service here. There is a horn up there. And I can hear all the music and all the voices that come from this place. So I know he preaches with power and with our heart. Pastor G never came from wealth and privilege. And there's no secret about that. From humble beginnings like many of us, he came. And he would be willing to do menial tasks if it meant service and earning an honest bread. May I pause to talk about honest bread now. Because many want to eat bread and they don't matter who it comes, whether to honesty or dishonest. And Pastor Joseph Campbell, I want you to know, sir, I tell you to your face, that some of the Christians are guilty as well. They support the wrong and the evil. And they are not prepared to stand up for righteousness as they have been called to do. So Bishop Cole said to tell you, conduct. Bishop Cole wants me to tell you that he has left, left a legacy and he wants you to follow in the path of holiness, in the path of righteousness, all the days of your life. So on behalf of the Justices of the Peace for the parish of West Fuller, 
I bring you a word of tribute, a word of condolence, but also a word of hope. We are not hopeless. Brother Vincent has done his part. It is now over to us to do our part for Christ's sake. Amen. A job well done. Amen? Yes. Very good representation. Yes. Bless the Lord. Continuing on our program, we will be doing the offertory hymn, Heaven's Jubilee. May I ask some ushers, some volunteers to come and help so that we can do this hymn. Oceans, oceans, please. Some that morning we shall see Jesus in the air, coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise, headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky. as the Lord prospers you. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air coming after you and me joy is ours to share oh what rejoicing there will be when the day shall rise it is to be
morning to the platform. Party to all the saints in the pews. Let us bow our heads before our maker this morning. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions, they fail not, as thou hast seen, thou forever will be. Father, we come before your presence this morning. We present our gifts before you. We say, please accept our gifts this morning. Father, we thank you that the principle of giving is that in giving we receive. So this morning, God, as we have given, we pray, Almighty God, that the gifts will be returned to us. Full measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Father, we pray that we will be blessed in the city. We will be blessed in the field. We will be blessed in our going out and our coming in. Father, we thank you this morning because all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all your love. Father, as we have presented to you, oh God, we know that you are our Jehovah Jireh. And we expect God because you are our Abba. You are our good, good Father. And so, God, whatever we need, you will provide. Father, we thank you for these and other mercies. In Jesus' name we pray to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We bless the Lord. Friends near and far, accept greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Amen. It's sad to say goodbye to a man who was so loved by everyone. Bless the name of the Lord. But the Bible said it's appointed unto man once to die. But after death comes the judgment. None of us know appointment, so we need to be ready, waiting with our lamps trimmed and burning. Continuing on our program, we'll be having a tributing song from the Sunday School Department and the ministering group of this church. Make them welcome in Jesus' name.
Petersfield group. And the Petersfield group was always the winning group. Sister Badan, and those in the congregation can remember that well. And when it shares the gallery, you can be assured that it will be a rich one. Rich in the sense that it will be rich spiritually. It would be rich financially. And it would be rich in terms of entertainment. Everybody would leave that together, feel challenged and blessed. And also entertain. He not only chair the Petersfield rally, but he chair other rallies in the circuit and in other Baptist church, Salamar Baptist church, and a host of other, and in particular the Ebron Baptist church. Amen. And what I can say it is that now we have a chairman of our own, and he has learned most of his skills from. Bishop Cole. Brother Ryan, are you here? No, he's not here. But Brother Ryan has learned a lot of his craft from Bishop Cole. Bishop Cole would participate in almost every funeral at the Petersfield Baptist Church. And generally, he would be the cheering, he would be cheering the order of service and he would also give tribute because you know what I'm, most of the members belonging to Petersfield Baptist Church he knew them personally I remember him as an ecumenist but not only as an ecumenist I remember, reflect on him as a community man he was involved in the life of the community. And he was respected and loved by almost all persons from the community. And the young and old knew him and wished him well. You know what happened? He has left a legacy for us to reflect on and for us to emulate. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon him.
comes behind Reverend Peart. When I got out of Bible school in 1990, Reverend Peart had just come to the Baptist church. And my mother, being a Baptist, told me about this young minister that came at the farm. Yes, I remember that funeral. The Ecumenist, I was about to mention that. But then he stole the spotlight again. And uh, I just want to talk about Bishop Paul always uh, encouraged us to remove the labels. Remove the labels. And then when it comes to the prayer train, we know, we know. Come on. We have all these awesome experiences. But you know what? I think I want to talk about the historic 96. Anybody remember that really the bell? Brother, brother, sister Marsha. I think this seemed the most outstanding year of soul winning in Petersville was 1996. The Petersville Church was getting ready to have two seed in January. Brother Porter told me that Petersville Church of God Mountain Assembly was ahead of us. So we backed up. And the Petersville Church led by Bishop Cole went to the square with a mighty tent in I remember in that first baptism, it was more than 50. That first baptism, 62. I said to Peter Steele and I said to Mount Grace, you have to pray for Pastor Paul. That amount of babies in the crib still trouble. I remember saying that if you have young women between 17 and 40, just imagine the kind of make make and confusion and all the things that Bishop is going to have to deal with. And so I keep on urging them to pray. Pray for Bishop Paul because he's going to face a serious challenge in to be nursing so many babies. March came and we had our pussy in and we got 34. When you put Petersfield Mountain Assembly and Petersfield Church of God um, and Petersfield Nazareth together, we had over 100 new souls. And I wondered what happened for Reverend Perry and what happened for the Baptist Reverend Pierce and what happened for New Testament and Wesleyan. I want to believe that 1996 have gone down in history as one of the greatest years of soul winning in this And this of course led the way this church had experienced a revival event. When I started ministry, I was only 24 years old. To come in this community, fresh out of Bible school, I think I might have preached four times or so in five years. Intimidated by the great preachers that were around me. And then to place me in Petersfield among Reverend Beard and Reverend Chandler and Father Perrin and Bishop Cole and Coolness was really, really intimidating. But they have nurtured me. And every 18th of November, I can expect a call from Bishop Cole to say, my brother, how your day is going? In reflecting, my life is richer and better because I've met this man of God. National Overseer, Bishop Joseph Campbell, other members of the platform, ministerial colleagues both on the inside and outside under the tent, my brothers and sisters, good morning. The pleasure is mine to bring tributes on behalf of the Jamaica Association of Full Gospel Churches, in particular the Westmoreland 
chapter and I personally want to extend apologies on behalf of Bishop Dr. Joyce Bernard who should be doing this tribute but unavoidably absent. Remembering Bishop Vincent Jocelyn Cole, a devoted servant of God, a treasured servant of God, a warrior who fought gallantly to plunder hell and populate the kingdom of God. The Jamaica Association of Full Gospel Churches, Westmoreland Chapter, stands in solidarity with the immediate family and the Church of God Mountain Assembly family at the passing of a stalwart and a local hero who recently gained promotion and responded to the call to beautify the kingdom of God. The songwriter said, we read of a place that's called heaven. Sweet home of the happy and the free. His truth in God's word he has given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy. Sweet home of the free. Fear heaven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. Bishop Cole was one of the founding members of the Westmoreland chapter of the Full Gospel Association churches. In fact, he also served on the executive as treasurer for a number of years. His gentlemanly conduct, inclusive of being neatly and properly attired, are key areas that was observed and will long remembered. His crossing of legs whenever he sits in a meeting represents the epitome of the man, the gentleman he was. Professionally done by this auspicious servant of God on many occasions, today we celebrate his memories in a positive way because of the positive ways in which he had impacted many lives. Today, as we celebrate the life of a genuine soldier in the army, we from the Full Gospel Association is confident that he is awaiting that great getting up morning. Rest well, Bishop Paul. May your soul sleep in the arms of the Lord. Bless the Lord in that great getting up morning. Hallelujah. Well, Bishop J. Walden, the world's mission director of the Church of God, the Mountain Assembly, followed by Reverend D. E. Morton Wills, representing the New Testament. And then we'll take a son of Bishop Paul, who came all the way from the United States of America, the Reverend Anthony Daly. At this time, Bishop J. Walden is coming, followed by Reverend Morton Wills, and then Reverend Anthony Daly. God bless everybody here today. What a beautiful gathering. What a beautiful crowd. Big crowd. Folks outside, overflow. Folks in the front. This is a great testament to the life of Brother Vincent Cole. So many friends and 
So many uh, great people that loved him. And this is a great representation today of the life of Brother Cole and how he affected people, how he touched people, and how him through the power of the Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost, changed the lives of people in a positive way. We love Brother Cole. We appreciate Brother Cole. We bring honor today from our world mission department around the world. 27 countries were represented in 1,100 and 59 churches in CGMA World Ministry Department. And thank God for that. Give the Lord a good hand. And from those 1,159 churches and pastors and overseers and bishops of the 27 countries that Brother Cole was good friends with, when Brother Cole would come to the assembly every year, he would, he would uh, meet the, the overseers from the uh, various countries and he became very, very good, close friends with many of those overseers from uh, the different countries in Africa and Haiti and uh, just around the world. And they really loved Brother Cole. Matter of fact, I've had uh, many phone calls from our overseers around the world saying, please, Brother Jay, if you go to Brother Cole's funeral, please give Sister Cole and give the Petersfield Church and give the people, uh, the Church of God Mountain Assembly family in Jamaica our greetings and tell them we're praying for them. Uh, Brother Cole, uh, I was connected with Brother Cole not only ministerially, but I was connected with Brother Cole family-wise. Brother Cole was our family. He was just not our friend and our comrade in the ministry, but Brother Cole was our family, my personal family, my wife, Sister Tammy. She loved Brother Cole very much. He was very special to my wife. My children were so close to Brother Cole. They loved this man of God. He was in our home many times. He traveled with us in our car. We took Brother Cole around many times to the various churches, trying to raise money to build this church, trying to raise money to build his home. And my wife, my son JJ, my daughter Bethany, and even my little daughter that I had in late age, little, little, little charity. They called Brother Cole affectionately Uncle Vincent. That's what they called him. Because he was our family. And I left my family crying. And they said, please, please, please tell the people that Brother Cole was our family. And we loved him very much. I remember Brother Cole, and I'll be short and I'll be a little personal, so excuse me for crying. I know big men are not supposed to cry. But this big man cries. I do. I cry. And I remember taking Brother Cole way up to Michigan, way up north in the USA. And Brother Cole did not like cold country. He was hot-blooded. He liked Jamaica. He liked the hot weather. And he did not like cold at all. But we took him in the wintertime, and that's the wrong time to take somebody to Michigan. I took him to Monroe Church, Pastor Rick Massengill. I took him to Belleville Church, Brother Ray DeLong. I took him to Woodhaven Church, Brother Dale Atkins, and all of the churches there in Michigan. It was about 10 degrees, cold, shivering, your lips quiver, your knees shake. It was so cold. And uh, we checked into the motel, and I showed Brother Cole how to turn the heat up. See, we have heaters in America. It gets cold. And I went into Brother Cole's room in about 30 minutes to check on him. He had the heat so high. It felt just like being in Petersville, Jamaica. It was hot. And we went out into the van to go to the restaurant to get something to eat. And Brother Cole said, Brother Jay, he said, I've got to get a coat. I've got to get a coat. His lips were quivering. His face was shaking. His hands were shaking, and we went to the store, and we brought we bought Brother Cole a big winter coat. 
And uh, we got out of the restroom. He put the coat on. We were walking to the van. It was about 10 degrees. There was snow on the ground. Brother Cole said, Brother Jay. He said, Do you think you could get me two coats? We went back to the store and I bought him another coat. We went to the motel. We laid down. We took a nap. We got up. We were going to church. We sat down in the van. Brother, Coach, Brother Cole's got a suit coat on. He's got two winter coats on. He sits down in the front with me. He says, Brother Jay, do you think I could get another coat? <laughs> I went and bought him three coats. And he never did say he was cold again. Everywhere we went, he had his suit coat, he had three coats, and he was happy. He was warm. I remember being with Brother Cole, traveling with him. What a great man of God. What a legacy that he is leaving. And what a church he is leaving. What a church body. I remember the little wooden church that sat, I think, about right here. How many remember the old church? Little church. And uh, we had some great services in the little church. But Brother Cole's dream was to build a big church, not for him, not for his name, not for his reputation, but for the glory of God and the kingdom of God. And with what the Lord has done, God fulfilled his dream, and the church is still going forward. And uh, I remember uh, also Brother Cole, he loved American food, but he sort of liked some of the brothers that come with me. They like most of the Jamaican food, but when we get to goat belly soup, they draw the line. They draw the line. They just, they don't like much of the goat, but I like goat belly. I, last time I ate goat belly was right here at the convention. I went home one year later and I had a baby girl. I did. I'm not kidding you. I got pictures of it. I can prove it. Every time I talk to Brother Cole on the phone, he said, stay away from the goat belly, Brother Cole. No goat belly for you. No goat belly. So we take it, we take it a little easy, Brother Vernon. I'm kidding to Brother Vernon. Amen. So we, we give honor to Sister Cole today. We love her. Appreciate her. I come in, Sister Cole, when Brother Cole had the stroke. She was there all the way. She took care of him. She fed him. She she done everything for him. And I, I talked to Brother Cole on the phone, talked to Sister Cole on the phone in England. And I remember the last picture I seen of Brother Cole. He was lying in the bed and a big birthday cake on his lap. It was his birthday. And Sister Cole got him a big birthday cake. We love you, Sister Cole. God bless you. We honor you today. Thanks for taking care of Brother Cole for all of us. We, we bless you in the name of the Lord. And also to all of our ministers here today, our CGMA Brotherhood, God bless you. I remember uh, Brother Cole, he liked most of the American food, but not all of it. And my Uncle Jim, how many remember Big Jim? My Uncle James, he came to Jamaica a lot. He had, a, he had just the thing about him. There was just something about him. When you went to a restaurant with my Uncle Jim, he ordered for you. You didn't order what you wanted. You ordered what he wanted. And I remember I dropped Brother Cole off in Cleveland, Ohio to preach at Aspinall Church. And I came to pick him up. I picked him up. We went to Lorraine, Ohio. And my Uncle Jim said, let's go eat. Let's go eat. we got to eat before you go. i got to feed Brother Cole. And we went to the Chinese restaurant down the road. Me and Brother Cole walked in. We were looking at the menu. We were going to figure out what we wanted. And the waitress came. And my Uncle Jim said, give us three peanut chickens. I said, peanut chicken? What is peanut chicken? And three big plates of Chinese chicken with peanuts all over and gravy. Brother Cole didn't eat a bite of it. He didn't touch a bite. I only ate about two bites. 
and I pushed the brake back. It was terrible. We got out in my van and we pulled out, got up on the interstate, and Brother Cole said, Brother Jay. He said, I didn't eat none of that, did you? I said, well, I ate about two bites. He said, would you mind to stop by McDonald's and let me get a hamburger? <laughs> that was Brother Cole, wasn't it? God bless the memory of Brother Cole. We love it. 30 years he served as island overseer of Jamaica. Well, give the Lord a good hand. 30 years. 30 years, Brother Kurt. I remember Brother Kurt. Last time I was here, he preached. And we appreciate the brothers. But 30 years. When he took over on the island of Jamaica, we just had a handful of churches. But it grew to 28 churches when Brother Cole was the overseer of the island of Jamaica. I think that's commendable, don't you? Amen. And we love the memory. God bless you. We love you. Go rest high on the mountain, Brother Cole. Your work on earth is done. Go to heaven shouting. Look for the Father and the Son. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Shall we shout hallelujah? Let's shout hallelujah. Somebody raise your hands in the house of God and give him some praise.
not for Reverend Cole. And if he had a funeral here today, and it's a minister that died, he that turned you upside down. So you know what you do? Look at your neighbor good if you just see him a long time. And say, let me praise God, no man. Tell the next one, say, me now go dead. Me now go dead. I must live, live, and declare the word.
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Good afternoon to everyone. God bless you. It's a wonderful time. Let me greet Bishop Campbell. Amen. Uh, officiating minister, uh, delegate from the United States of America, Jellicoe, Tennessee, and close vicinity in and around Jericho, Tennessee, and our local Caribbean, amen, uh, our people, and uh, ministers of the gospel, Jamaica. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm very happy this evening to be here, even though mixed with sorrow and a bit of grief with it. But I'm so glad to be a son of the side. Amen. At the Church of God, Mountain Assembly, Peter's Street. Amen. My trainer and guidance, the Reverend Gold Overseer, Vincent Cole. We begin our journey, 19, late 1979, up into the early 1980s. We become friends, amen, because he was the first open chapter of my life, amen, 1980, when I opened my first page to a relationship, amen, a widespread epidemic that spread the word, spread from the Garden of Eden, and it lasts until this time. It's all different from the COVID. He was the master of ceremony for my marriage, for my first marriage. Amen. Can we praise the Lord? Amen. Then, there and then, we begin our ministry. First, let me piggyback a little bit to tell you, switch your dial to local Caribbean IRFM. Because I trained under him to shoot straight and to crisscross tongue. Amen. So I follow his logic and I live by that until this day of my life. I don't have no time to hesitate, to waste any time, but to shoot and shoot with intention. Amen. Shoot deadly because that's the way he trained me to shoot deadly. Amen. Go far. Amen. The bullseye. So I'm going straight for the bullseye. And I want you to change to our reference so you can understand clearly my language without uh, trying to find out what I'm saying. Amen. Hallelujah to the love of God. Let us praise God one more time. Let us praise him one more time. Let us celebrate him one more time. Let us give him the glory one more time. Let us ask for God to God. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. Now I, I have passed forward. 1979, late, early 1980s, we become our journey. Now our friendship, we become psyche and trip. Traveling all over from the time we begin, somebody make mention of the Gold Church, 16 by 24. Amen. We begin right here in Petersville. Hallelujah to the love of God. Then we become, amen, a close Tom and Jerry. When you see one, you see the other. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Then we develop to become stinky and the brain. Now when we become stinky, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now when we become stinky and the brain, we have started to go into territory, boundary, with no respect. And wherever we go, we take, amen, the community captive. Do you hear it today? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Wherever we go, we left footprint, imprint, and a last longing memory. Amen. We enter into Silver Spring. I can't remember what year, but we come out with 37 that we baptize and a sermon on it on the crusade. Can you lift your hands and praise God? Hallelujah. We go into the land and we come out with victory. And our Father and Son, we go up, amen, uh, but we are in Jericho. Come out with victory. We traveled across the island into St. Elizabeth, where I was the referee person, amen, to incorporate, amen, the Bethel, amen, Mountain Assembly Church of God, Mountain Assembly, and we left with victory. We move on to what? To the Church of God, amen, Mountain Assembly, Galloway, amen, and we have a great man here today that are officiating the Reverend Joseph Gabler. I'm just Telling you about the manner that lying before you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. A great man, a great teacher, a great preacher. Hallelujah. A great demonstrator. Amen. An undisputed champion. Hallelujah. A battle axe. A great warrior. Hallelujah. Amen. In power still, I could hear the sound whispering in my ear. 
said. And when we could say, Bishop Paul will lie down until you hear the call it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We could say, Brother Trini, lie down until you hear the call it. We could say, Overseer, oh, come, lie down because you will hear the call it.
to come be reminded. The dogs were there. The drunk crew were there. That is how he said it. He said the sheep were there. He said human being was left outside. And people started to come to the altar. And I remember it was 17 my father took to the riverside. Give to Caesar.
he includes his innings. I know he's called to higher service. We are the higher priest now. Oh, bless the name of the Lord.
Catherwood. And we went over to Petersville on the Sunday. And it rained and rained and rained and we were soaking wet. And some people wanted to come when Pastor Paul said, we come and business for the Lord. And nobody now left here. So we had service tonight in wet up clothes. And guess what happened? We gained schools.
Bishop Tim Bart. To our local Bishop, the Reverend Joseph Kiyaku. To the family of our dearly beloved Bishop Cole. Especially wife, hallelujah, wife Cole and the family of the Petersfield Church of God. On behalf of the district of churches in which I serve, Mantico Bay, led by Pastor Peter King, Stone Edge, led by Reverend Wilson, Cottonwood, led by the Reverend Nigel Mish, Macal Point, led by the Reverend Vassal, La Covia, of course, in which I serve. I want to say to us that today we have lost a great leader. The first bishop, local bishop of the Church of God, Mountain Assembly, Jamaica. Well, local bishop. Somebody just say, my Lord, a man. Hallelujah! A man who has served with integrity. A man who has served with dignity of the highest standard. A man who stands vanguard for the constitution of the Church of God, the Mountain Assembly, Bishop Cole, committed servant of the living God. Can somebody give that a prayer? But I remember 23 years ago, he did, I have to remember, I will never forget, he did our wedding. Praise God. I got that kind of love for the man. I admired him in his deportment. He was a slick dress and the look at the cover of the program. You will see the man alive me at him. And I have been emulating, praise God, his deportment. So let us see how we look nice to him. Here I go! God, 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 God. I love the man. But I start to develop a hate for him. I must confess it not today. When the man came to La Covia, and the man said, You mama is getting more than care of manage. It looked like said, I see in you God ministry. When the man went to sit up and I cut a hair for him. But he was seeing something in a man. So when you see me praising God. Yes, so God bless you. Say he won't go. Like 
So we continue to praise the name of the Lord. So we continue to praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. We greet the presence of the Holy Spirit. Who is evident in this house. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To all our dignitaries in our various capacities. Praise God. I bring you greetings. Bless the name of Jesus Christ. I also do extend condolences to the family and friends of Bishop Vincent J. Cole. Yes, a man who will be greatly missed. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. It is a mixed feeling that we gather here today. Praise God. We appreciate the fact that God has called him to a higher level of service in his kingdom. The truth is, we are never prepared to let go of our loved ones. But with no choice than to honor God and accept his decision to call him home, we humbly submit. Amen, somebody. Praise God. So we are here today. I stand on behalf of the Honor of this of Church. Praise God. To honor Bishop Vincent J. Cole. Praise God. He is worthy to be honored in his life and in his death. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we honor his life, his work, and the great contribution he's made. He has made to the various in, in the various capacities that he served. Praise God. Bishop Cole served the Church of God Mountain Assembly as the island overseer for in excess of three decades. That is a commendable service. Amen, somebody. That's something worth commending. Praise the name of Jesus. Over the three decades or so, he established many churches. We understand that he started from a handful of churches and end up close to 30. Praise God over his time. And so we commend his work also. Praise the name of Jesus. Throughout his time, he served all the churches of the Mountain Assembly to include the St. James Division, the Hannah, the, the St. Elizabeth Division, the Hanover Division, as well as the Western Division. Praise God. To which he is offered leadership whilst providing pastoral care to the Petersfield and later on the Silver Spring CGMA Church and the wider community. Praise God. His passion. Dedication, commitment, praise God, and will to continue serving was demonstrated, praise God, to his spiritual stamina as he kept going uh, even uh, when he was well in age. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Today, people throughout Jamaica and the diaspora is more than the loss of a great man, a bishop, a pastor, a marriage officer, a justice of, justice of the peace and so much more. Though not present in life, the contribution he made to humanity have made the world a better place. And so he will forever be remembered. Amen, somebody. Amen. There's one thing that is essential to notice. That oftentimes we attend Thanksgiving services like this. So much is said about the contributions made by the person that we are honoring. However, there is one thing oftentimes missing. Praise God. You will talk about the physical contribution he made to transform the lives of the people. When it comes to their work in building the kingdom of God and service to God, that is oftentimes missing. Today we are truly grateful that we are celebrating a man that didn't just serve in the physical, he served in the spiritual. Amen. And today we are believing God that angels ushered him home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we look forward to seeing him again. Amen. Sleep well, Bishop Paul. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Lord. Hallelujah. We have two more to give reflection, but before I forget, Madam Sister Cole,
myself, Reverend Molloy, Bishop Campbell, went to visit him. And he said, he thanked God for you. If it had not been for you, he would not be able to get the medical help that he got. If nobody else tells you, I'm going to tell you today that he appreciates you. And he's grateful to God that God has placed you in his life. He disclosed to us, if it had not been for you, nothing would be possible. And he loves you no matter what. And he's grateful. So let me declare to you. Hallelujah that he died with a passion and a gratefulness and a love for you. You have done well. You have done well. If nobody did not say it, let me say it today that he appreciates you from his heart. And when he was talking, the tears were flowing. And he lifted his hand and he said, I thank God. We thank God for you too. We thank God for you too. May God continue to bless you. May you continue to prosper you. May you live with the good memories that you have had together. And we will be praying for your strength and the rest of the family's strength. God bless you today. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Our prayers are with you. No matter what, our prayers are with you. A man who served as General Overseer, Mission Director, General Overseer, Mission Director, now he's on the Elder Board, will be coming to give us a brief reflection because if he should talk, we would not leave here today. Wow. The Reverend Kenneth Massing is all the way from the United States of America. Then we will have the Bishop Marlon Leslie, a son of the deceased. And we will also take the remembrance from the church after these two reflections. And so, after that, I will allow the National Overseer to introduce the choir and introduce the servant of the Lord who will be blessing our hearts today. But before we repass passing will come, let me acknowledge the presence of our member of Parliament, Mr. George Wright. Amen. And we are inviting you to the fall as per the Bishop's order. Reverend Massingill is coming as at this time to give his reflection. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! What an honor it is today to be included in the program. Pay respect to a great man. I give honor today to our current bishop, Bishop Joseph Campbell, my great friend, doing a great work for the Lord, and Sister Campbell. I give honor to our general overseer, Brother Tim Barty, and our assistant overseer, Brother Jay Wall, great man of God. And it's great to have my wife with me. I asked her if she wanted to say something to all you ladies. She said no. I give honor to our local official and the word that you said about Bishop Cole. Great man of God. To all of my fellow laborers and ministers, I greet you in the name of Jesus today. I know that I've got a short time, and I've been knowing this man a long time. I remember the first time I met Brother Cole, he was an humble leader, worker out here at the health center. He became, he was a pastor of a small church here. 
Our relationship grew. Brother Cole became our Allen overseer. He was the overseer in the foundation of the Church of God Mountain Assembly. We had only been in the country of Jamaica a few years. And I was thinking, next month, the 22nd day of next month, will be 49 years that I've been part of the ministry of Jamaica. This is the second overseer that I've been to their funeral. In our first days, Brother Enos served us. And when I became mission, missionary, my first thing to do was to attend his funeral. I remember going to Kingston to get, register our church. And the man looked at me and he said, Who is your Jamaican leader? I said, We don't have one. He just died. <laughs> he said, You're a headless organization, aren't you? I felt pretty small about that. I said, We are currently in Jamaica, but we will have a good leader. I'm just forerunner. And God provided Brother Cole at that time. And he led us through those foundational years. His spirit of humility and his spirit of servanthood laid the foundation. I know the church is built upon the apostles, the prophets, and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. I understand that. But added to that, the foundation of this church was upon Bishop Cole. Amen. And we give great honor to him in that. One of the greatest statements that I think has been said today to honor this great man was when the pastor said he baptized 50 people one day. He was recognized in this community as a soul winning pastor. I appreciate those words. One of the greatest things we have to do is to win souls for Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter how many accolades we can get placed on our name. Doesn't matter how many things we can accomplish. Unless we're recognized as a soul winner Loving people, serving people, we'll lose out in the end. Jesus said one of these days, and I believe Brother Cole heard this already, enter in to the joys of the Lord. You have been faithful over a few things. I have made you ruler. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Yes, sir. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, I go somewhere in the beyond. I don't know exactly where heaven really is except above. But I know one thing. Where he is, is where Mother Cole I thank God for that. And I appreciate today all the accolades that have been given to him. And to Sister Cole, I give great honor to you. I remember when he was alone and he found you. Amen. And I heard that he got married back then. And I rejoice with you. I was honored to be here at Brother Cole's funeral. Or Sister Cole, his mother, for her funeral. What a great time it was. And to be honored again today to speak here. Words fail. But I also want to give honor again. I said Brother Cole was our foundational overseer. Brother Campbell is a great overseer working in a time that we really never thought would come. 
is sitting there. When I shook his hand this morning, he said, I hold you again. We could not say, Reverend our Bishop, you know, may I think come to the man say, I'm all on your boy. And he said, I'm your boy. I thank God for Reverend Robbins, who is still alive. I'm not sure if he's here today from Hado. But we thank God for those persons who encourage me well. I'm in the church and plays the trail. And my friend, my very, very good friend, Reverend and Bishop, I respect you as my good friend. I have about 60 seconds leave now. Thank God for his goodness. So in the final portion of my 60 minutes, Paul declared a word to us in Romans chapter 8. I am persuaded Look at your neighbor and say, be persuaded. Be persuaded. Tell your neighbor, I am persuaded. Come now. Touch them instrumental a few seconds, boy. I'm in church. I am persuaded. That me not dead. No life. No angels. No principalities. I leave you. I leave you with a word from Hebrews.
fire exit. Those who do not have seats. Today we are excited. The speaker for the afternoon, Bishop Timothy Barty. He's our general overseer. He serves the Church of God Mount Assembly with distinction. I am delighted to introduce you, sir. Take your liberty. Minister to the hearts of our people. Jesus a good man today. We're, just, we're here to honor him. Amen. It's all about Jesus. <laughs> it's all about Jesus today. We're so glad to be here. What a celebration. I said, what a celebration we are having today. What a celebration we are having today. Amen. In honor of our friend. We thank God for the opportunity to be able to come and be a part and share with you this day. We've known Brother Cole for many, many years. Uh, came to Jamaica the first time in 1996, and the first place that I preached is right here. He was so kind and gracious to me. He has served our organization so well, and he has so loved back in the United States by every pastor, so respected, so highly esteemed, and uh, what an honor it is to spend a few moments with you today. I give honor to Sister Cole and to the entire family and to the church family here, to all the dignitaries and to all of the come ministers. Come on, people. Come on, people. Amen. Come on, stop Amen. It. Praise the Lord. A miracle almost happened today. We came this close to a miracle. All of these folks who spoke and all who sang uh, did not speak or talk about the scripture that I'm going to talk about until the very, very last person gave the very, very last word. And he, uh, he got on my text, but that's all right, amen? And I, I'm going to count that as a, as a confirmation, amen? It's so good to be here. Let me say one more thing. I'm so thankful for Bishop Campbell. He's arranged all this, the time that's put into it, the beautiful program, all of the things that take place. Could you give him a real good hand today? We let him know how much we appreciate him. If you have your Bibles today, I'm going to be in 2 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 6 through 8. It's partially been mentioned here today, but let me take a few moments to dwell there and to talk to you a little bit about these wonderful verses. They go like this, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 6, Paul says, I'm ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. Can I get a witness in the house? I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And then I like what he says. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not only to me, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Say amen to the word today. Amen, amen. God has your blessing and anointing today in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Timothy is written about 30 years after the Apostle Paul's conversion. It's considered his swan song, he, his last words to his young prodigy, his soon-to-be successor, Timothy. And as he writes to him, the, what is stated explicitly in verses 4 through 6 has been hinted to as you read throughout the, uh, the, the book or the letter of 2 Timothy. And so Paul begins in verse 6. He tells about the present. As he speaks about the present, he knows he's facing death. And what he is saying is, I am ready. And then in the next verse, he talks about the past. And when he talks about the past, he looks back and said, things have been tough, but it has been worth it. Amen. And then he looks out of the future. He says, there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. He's saying, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Amen. And so then, as he begins this scripture, he says, for I am now ready to be offered. This is what he says, I am ready. We sang about it. Carry on. Be ready. And uh, Pastor Cole spent his lifetime getting ready. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. He was ready. I want to ask you the question today. Are you ready? Sometimes death comes to us. We see it approaching. We have time to get ready. But I come by to tell you that some 
sometimes it shows up unexpectedly and we don't have time to get ready. We have to be ready. I said we have to be ready. And if you're in the house or under my voice today, I encourage you, get ready. Get ready. Be ready. And you may not have time later, but thank God for the grace of God that came into Bishop Cole's life. And, and when he left this world, he can say the same thing. I am ready. Can you give him a good hand clap of praise now? He said, I'm ready to be offered. That word offered is connected to the Old Testament. It's talking about a drink offering. In the Old Testament, you would bring your sacrifice. It would be offered as a burnt sacrifice. You would put grain up on it, which would be sprinkled over top of it. And then you would take the fruit of the vine, the wine, and you would pour it on top of the burnt offering. And when you did that, a puff of smoke would go up into the air. And the sweet fragrance would fill the area. And Paul knows he's getting ready to be beheaded. He knows he's getting ready to spill his blood. And he's saying, my death is like a drink offering. I'm pouring it out to God. And I'm giving everything to him. You see, they poured out every drop. They didn't let anything stay inside of there. They poured it all. Hey, I'm glad to say to you that of a 
an animal from a cart or plow or from his load. And his, his, this animal's pulling all day long the load behind him. The end of the day has come. And it's time for departure. It's time to unhook the load. Can I tell you, on August 1st, and the load was unhooked. What load are you talking about? I'm talking about that ministry is a heavy load to carry.
He's saved. It's been a battle. There's intensity. There's labor in this fight. I fought it. There's agony that comes with that. But Paul isn't whining about and complaining. Oh, poor me. I had to go through this. I had to go through that. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, I have overcome. I am a victor. I have overcome every battle.
Can I get an amen in the house? Somebody you trusted because you knew that they would take care of it. God looked down to the Apostle Paul and said, I'm giving you a ministry. I'm giving you the word. I'm giving you doctrine. And Paul said, I've guarded it. I've kept it. Heresy tried to creep in. Apostasy came. Heirs came. But every letter that Paul writes is dealing with a heresy or some type of problem. He stood back and he said as he presents it to God, I have kept the faith. From all that I've heard here today, it's been said many times, this was a man that told you the truth. Can I get away? And if you weren't telling the truth, he'd stop you because he wants nothing but truth. Tell it like it is. Preach it like it ought to be preached. The second implication, I'm trying to hurry. The second implication is the idea of when he got saved on that Damascus road. He got a hold of his faith, a relationship with God. And down through the years, the enemy persecuted him. You know what he said? I have kept the faith. And you put me in prison. I've kept the faith. You have opened my back up with, to look like furrows. But I have kept the faith. I have been lonely. I have been ostracized. The Judaizers follow me and try to destroy my reputation. But I've kept the faith. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. But I kept the faith and the devil trying to spend a lifetime to pry his fingers off of his faith. But I'm glad to tell you today that when Paul entered heaven, he said, I have kept the faith. Listen closely to me. Everything negative that happens into your life, the trials you face, the difficulties that you Confront. I know they bring pain and heartache and trouble and lack of peace and confusion in your life. But that's not the goal of it. The ultimate goal is to get to your faith. The devil wants to pry your fingers off of your faith. But I got good news for you. Amen. He can't do that. And I can see Paul saying, I will die clutching my faith. The only way that you'll get my faith is over my dead body. And, and then he says, I won't need it then because I won't be walking by faith. I will see him face to face. I will see him with my own. Paul says, let me tell you about my present. I'm ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I am ready. He said, let me tell you about my past. It was worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. I can see him looking down from heaven saying it was worth it. Every mile, every ship that I crossed the sea, everything, it was worth it. And quickly, last of all, he said, let me tell you about my future. He says, henceforth, henceforth, in other words, right in front of me, just a little ways ahead of me. He wasn't saying, I'm talking about a figment of my imagination. I'm not talking about a fable or a myth, a maybe, a might, a 50-50 chance. He says, I know what is ahead of me. I have no doubt. You've come too late to tell me that there is heaven on the other side of death's door. And I know, he's saying, I know that I know what's waiting for me. It's for us. It's laid up. There's a crown with my name on it. <laughs> right on the other side of death's door, there's a crown with your name on it. <laughs> you just got to keep on keeping on. got a crown of righteousness. <laughs> Today we give the Olympians gold, silver, bronze medals. But back then they gave them a wreath. It was made out of vines. It was made out of plants. The moment they cut it or severed it from the plant, it began to die. This wreath wasn't very valuable because within days it would wither away and crumble up. You see, the value of the crown is 
not in the material or what it is made of. The value of the crown is based upon the occasion on which it, gave, it is given. And who is the one giving it? Amen. And so when he says there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, he's not looking at silver and gold. He's saying it's time for my crossing. And Jesus himself, not an angel, not a seraphim, not a cherubim, not an elder, not a prophet, Jesus himself will lay upon my head a crown of righteousness. You see, there's two words for crown in the New Testament. There's diadem, which is a king's crown, most often made of gold. But then there's the word Stephanus. And Paul is writing, there is laid up for me a Stephanus of righteousness. I just wonder, when he wrote the word Stephanus, if his mind didn't go back to a man by the name of Stephan or Stephen, who he stood there and held the garments as, as his life was ebbing away. But Stephen looked up toward heaven and he said, I see the heavens open. I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. I wonder if when he wrote it, he may have said, Lord, will you stand? Will I be able to see you before I see you? I said, will I be able, when I'm heading to the chop block, I know you'll be with me. Amen. See, the Stephanus, the diadem is the king's crown. The Stephanus is the victor's crown. There is a victor here today. Can I get a witness in the house? I said, there's a victor here today. He didn't win the victory on his own. He won the victory because somebody was fighting the battle for him. I said, somebody, the battle is the Lord's. It's not yours. The battle is the Lord's. He'll fight for you. When I was 11 years old, I'll tell you this quickly. We was playing two-on-two -two football in the backyard. Our football is not your football. All right? It's the football. Anyways, we're arguing all the time. And so me and my friend Jimmy... He said, we're going to fight you and Robert and your friend. We said, we'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll fight. Well, we went and followed them. And Robert went to his dad and said, we're getting ready to fight Jimmy and Timmy. And his dad said, here's what you do. Before they, could, before they even notice it, go up and punch Jimmy. And while Timmy's looking at Jimmy, punch Timmy. Great father, all right? <laughs> so we go out to the backyard. It's on. Before I knew it, Jimmy walked over and slugged one boy, and he went to the ground. And then Jimmy walked over and slugged the other boy, and he went to the ground. And here's what I know. We won. I said we won. Hey, can I tell you, you've got, a, you've got an elder brother fighting for you. I said you've got somebody on your side. You're going to win the battle, and just step into it. Let him fight your battle. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, I'm hurrying, I promise you, the righteous judge, implying that the judge that put a sentence up on him was unrighteous, which no doubt was Nero. Nero hated the Christians, but I want to tell you, we have a righteous judge. He is 100% right all the time. He is fair. He is equitable. We have a good God. He says he shall give it to me that day. Hey, he's not just going to give it to me. He said, I'm a great preacher. I'm a great church planner. I'm a writer of scripture. I'm a, there are miracles have been in my head, but he's not just giving it to me. He's giving it to everybody that loves his appearing. I'm finished. The presence of God is the ultimate reward. Not streets of gold, not walls of jasper, not mansions on the hillside. The presence of God. Do you love his presence today? I believe I'm in a place that loves his presence. He looked to the future and he said, I can't wait. I want you to see this. He's done. In a place, 
in southern United States is called Alabama. Please listen to me closely. There's a town called Florence, a small town. You will travel there. Someone will take you about a mile and a half outside of town. You will get out of the car and you will walk about a quarter of a mile and you will find a cemetery from the 1800s. And on those cemetery stones, you will read things like, Beloved Father, Dear Sister, Caring Mother. But they found one tombstone that had five words on it. It had the name of the man, the day he was born, and the day he died. And these are the five words that was written on his tombstone. A man of unquestioned integrity. His whole life was summed up in five words. And as I close today, I stand before, I believe, a man of unquestioned integrity. That we have no doubt where he is. We have no doubt what happened to August first When he entered into the presence of God. And the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, enter to the joys of the Lord. Hey, we have a chance to see him again. Some of you, listen to me, some of you are saying goodbye. But some of us are saying, I'll see you on the other side. Be ready. I said be ready. If you're not ready, get ready. You know, you have no idea when death will come. This man lived his life trying to make sure you would be ready. So that you could sit eternity in heaven with him.
tribute to the late Michel Vincent Charles de otherwise called Brother G. Bishop Cole started his spiritual journey at a very tender age. His ultimate dream was to become a teacher of the preacher of the gospel. And so, as a young man, he and his friend would play church. They would sing and clap, and of course, he be the preacher. Hallelujah. I was told that pastor would they would do things that repeat a real church in action. Hallelujah. Which I would sprinkle water on the forehead of his friends while he would sing this song. Wash, wash, wash all my sins away. That was his song. His favorite song. Bishop first ministered at the Mount Judah Church of the Nazarene, the now Peter's Church of the Nazarene, before he built and settled in this church, this in Mount Genesis. He was elected overseer for the Mount Assembly in Corporation, a position he held with pride until he started. He dearly loved his mountain assembly family. Pastor constantly reminded us at times, one in particular, and I quote, I will never forget that Wednesday night in the year 1964 when the Holy Ghost lit me down. People said I was getting crazy, but yes, I was getting crazy for the Lord. A brother, a justice of the peace, a marriage officer, a father, a force of all, a champion of the Christian faith. He served God in complete community. He was an educated servant who served the people of God with different capabilities and responsibilities within the Church of God, Mountain Assembly. Bishop was a courageous leader, one who spoke the truth with love, without fear or favor. He stood up for what is right and just, one who always advocated for peace. He always reminded people that true peace comes from God, because Jesus said, I am the Prince of Peace. Bishop, you left us Although we cannot see you, you are always at your side. We miss your smile, your joking ways. We miss the things you used to say. And when old times we do call, it's then we miss you most of all. In life, we love you dearly. In death, we love you still. Hallelujah. In our hearts, you know the place. Else, we love the vision, pastor, prodigy, what God loves you best. May your soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine.
and would also serve many functions. He was unique in his own ways of doing this, and he earned the love of many. He was very funny, very comical, but very anointed and very appointed. The people loved Brother Lee everywhere he went, and he loved the people everywhere he went. As time progressed, he was invited to minister to speak at a church function in Hanover for the Church of God Mountain Assembly. He fell in love with the teaching and doctrine of this denomination, and so he sought how he could become part of this organization. He applied and was welcomed with open arms in the year 1972. They were indeed happy to receive him as they were praying for a younger preacher to help with the work in Jamaica, as most of the ministers at that time were older men. The church's name was changed to the Peterson Church of God Mountain Assembly. After two years for the Church of God Mountain Assembly, he was unanimously elected as well as the national overseer for the churches in Jamaica. Some of these churches were located in rural areas where vehicles were not accessible. Riding on the back of a donkey was the only means of transportation. But Bishop Paul was determined to reach the people under his jurisdiction and to reach the lost at any cost. He would reminisce and laugh about his days struggling to Stone Age and Riverside over rocks and hilly terrain through the rain, soaking wet, with shoes filled with mud and water. Many times trying to beat the heat, he brought the branches of the tree to give him some shade. He persevered without complaint or murmuring. He was making sure that he kept the promise he made. I will go without to murmur, and his footstep follows still. Not only was he well known in Jamaica, but he was known in the United States of America for the CGMA, where he attended their annual general camp meeting, and thus preaching in many local churches after. He was loved and respected by many who looked forward to him embracing their presence with his many sermons. The Americans could get on to Praise the Lord. Raise your hand and praise the Lord. His years of indelible service never go unnoticed. He had served well and raised up many sons and daughters in Christ who now serve as pastors, evangelists, missionaries, and lay people all over this country and in other nations of the world. In the year 2010, Bishop B.J. Cole found love again. He met and fell in love with Miss Audrey Griffiths while visiting England. And they later got married in Jamaica, December 3, 2011. His wife, being a British citizen, would travel back and forth from England to Jamaica, ensuring that the love kept burning bright and remained strong. As the years progresses, Bishop Cole began to have health challenges. He would complain about pain and weakness in his body. But when he was given a microphone, it was very evident. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit, and so he executed that the gospel well. In the year 2018, the pain in his back got worse, and he was later diagnosed with spinal problem. He visited several doctors and was placed on medical treatment along with physical therapy. Despite therapy and medical treatment, his condition continued to deteriorate. In the year 2021, he went to live with his wife in England and also to get medical help. She immediately took him to see the doctor and was sent to physical therapy. But due to a weakness in his legs, he was unable to continue therapy. He was then sent to do an MRI of his spine. This MRI captured the blood clot in his lungs. He was immediately admitted in the hospital and treated. During that time, further tests were conducted which showed that he had an enlarged prostate and he was treated and released from the hospital. He spent two years in England where he would from time to time visit the doctors who were keen at making sure he had all of that medically for him. While being at home in England, he got daily home visits from 
where we shall lay his body. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all. You are mortal formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. This you ordained when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song.
give you peace. Hallelujah. 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 Turn around and hug somebody and say,